Hey guys, Steve here from Nostalgia, putting a video together so we can chat about the latest confirmed features for the Bleem Sync 1.0 release that's coming out anytime this weekend. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to hop onto the internet and we are going to take a look right from the developer's mouths to see what we can expect coming up in version 1.0. So now we're looking at our latest feature list, and if you take a peek, there are a lot. These are all changes and updates that are being, that are going to be coming out. So I'm going to go through the list, and I'm just going to focus on just a few of the um, the more meaningful ones. So to start things off, we're going to look at the Bleem Sync itself, uh, the application. So it looks like they've added a new UI to allow easy syncing and modding for your PlayStation Classic. So that means there's going to be some sort of a user interface on your desktop computer that will actually allow you to transfer your games directly onto your USB stick. And it is supposed to be much nicer and much easier to use than having to load things into um, your USB drive and then filling out a game.ini or running that BleemSync application to try to find the proper image and try to find the proper uh, game data. And it looks like this is going to be a little bit easier. Next, the USB payload has been completely redone from scratch, and that's good because it is more stable, it'll have faster boot times, and it'll be more flexible. So that's, that's welcome news. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So they've got a completely new and improved bootloader, so that contains more sense checking and script vetting to ensure no broken boots, which is a good feature. So they've added a permanent safe USB lockout disable, Telnet and FTP support. These services will install on initial installs, so you don't need a USB to load these services. They've also added NTFS and XFAT drive support. So this is good. Um, as you guys know, we've had to format our USB drives to FAT32. Now we will be able to format them to XFAT, or if you've got a larger USB stick and you weren't able to format to FAT32, now we can use those um, right through the XFAT format. So that'll be good. Uh, in addition to that, it is much faster to transfer files onto um, an NTFS or XFAT drive than it is to transfer them onto a FAT32. So that will hopefully speed up the process of transferring games onto your USB stick. So there's going to be some improved LED support. Green equals idle slash OK. Orange is Bleem Sync function running. Flashing red equals attention needed or see on screen. So now you can see right by looking at your PlayStation Classic if everything's running the way it's supposed to be. Another big change that they've got is the integration of RetroArch by default. So they are saying that that will be optional in later builds, but for most people who've been playing around um, with the boot menu and with RetroArch, you know that you're probably going to want it on there. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to play other console games Um and of course you get more flexibility using RetroArch because you're not bound by the pre-installed emulator for the PlayStation Classic. So it says that the initial install sets a basis for backup slash restore and OTG support coming in 1.1. So OTG support is something that I was really looking forward to. Um, we aren't going to get it on the 1.0 release. And for those who don't know what OTG support is, uh, an OTG adapter essentially would allow you to plug your USB port into the same slot that your power cord runs into. So it's almost got two different ports. It's a, it's a little adapter. I'll put one on screen here. So as you can see here, you can plug your USB port into the side of it, and then your power cord goes into the back, which would then free up your PlayStation 1 and 2 controller ports on the front of the console. So that's really nice, and now there's no need to have a USB hub. So they're saying that the game folders are much less complicated and require less mounting per game, and it includes a patch for the stock 20 games to run at full speed if launched via RetroArch PSCX from either the stock user interface or the playlist. Okay, so now we're gonna look at some of the boot updates. So they've added the ability to fully customize your boot routine. A lot of people aren't gonna be messing around with that, um, but it is there if you do know what you're doing and you are trying to select functions or routines or extra debugging routines uh, that you wanna do during the boot time. Added customizable boot options, which includes quick load, health check disable, uh, custom splash screen support. Right now, it's only gonna be a static splash screen. You're not gonna be able to put in a video splash screen. 
So they've added in what they call a kick-ass uh, Bleem Sync splash screen on load, uh, which is pretty cool. That can also be disabled or customized if you don't like it. So they've added a new build of boot menu as default. Now with Bleem Sync theme image, and the ability to change the boot menu background theme too, just like the splash screen. So you can edit that, you can put in your own image. I'm sure there's some parameters you have to follow, but once we see the build, we'll be able to know exactly what can be done there. They've also added boot menu music toggles, so that means you can have music playing while the boot menu is up. So they've bundled custom original 90s PS1 demo style boot menu music. So they've also added the ability so you can boot directly into the boot menu, RetroArch or the stock user interface. That's configurable from your USB stick or from the user interface. And most importantly, they've removed the long boot times, especially from larger collections. So if you were one of those people that had a really big collection of games, you're no longer going to have to wait uh, that extended period of time for everything to load up. So that's good news. Now, when we look at the stock UI updates, they've added the ability to load in the original 20 games on EMMC into the stock UI, including your customs. They've added auto alphabetizing so that way you can sort automatically by alphabetical order, or you can also set it, set the games in any order you want from the UI. They added the ability to easily load in custom UI themes. You can load as many themes onto the USB you want, and then you can select right from the config. They've added the ability to randomize themes on boot. So if you have five themes in there and you want it to randomize every single time you turn it on, it'll be a different theme. You can actually set that up now. So that's really cool. So it's saying themes no longer need all theme files to work, just requires the files you wish to replace. And that includes sound. So this one's a really cool feature here. They've added the ability to launch all PCSX games from the stock user interface with RetroArch PCSX. And they're saying that that's a recommended feature. Um, and I think that's just because when you run your PlayStation games through RetroArch, it tends to run better. They've added support for save states and save files when launching games via RetroArch PCSX. And they've added physical console button support to emulate stock PCSX emulator. So now we move on to the RetroArch updates, and there's a few of them in there that are pretty cool. So they've improved the RetroArch deployment method for PlayStation Classic. So it'll automatically load the PS1 BIOS to RetroArch on first boot, so no requirement to source the PS1 BIOS. Improved playlist support to make it easier to use. It includes all core info files by default. So that's nice. We no longer have to pull all of the cores that we want. They'll all be included. They fixed the mapping for the PS3 and PS4 controllers. They're also going to include a custom and exclusive PlayStation Classic RetroArch theme. And I guess it's based off of the PS4 20th anniversary PlayStation 1 theme. They've also included a monochrome theme, and that's just something that you can switch if you want um, right, through the, um, right through the settings. You can switch which theme you want. They've added overlay support with scan lines available by default. Added stock PS1 games in playlists so you can load stock games directly from RetroArch playlist. They've cut out some dead weight and reduced file size of RetroArch so it runs a little bit more efficiently. They've also improved the screenshot saving for RetroArch when saving screenshots for save files. So they've redone the initial config and optimized the settings for the PlayStation Classic. Uh, they've set proper notification, background, and fonts, and there's been a bunch of miscellaneous fixes and improvements, so that's really cool. And under the miscellaneous updates, they've added dev tools uh, and a ton of other small things that they've uh, they haven't mentioned. But other than that, that's pretty much it. I'm really looking forward to the release of Bleemsync 1.0. As soon as that release comes out, I'll be making a video on how to install it. And from what I've been reading, the installation process is going to be a little bit more uh, intensive than previously. We're going to have to be going back and forth from our console. And if you've already got a pre-existing build, there's going to be a slightly different method for you to um, get running on it than if you were to do a brand new install. So I will go through all of that in the video when I've got access to, um, to BleemSync 1.0. But other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate all the support. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on if you haven't. But I'll talk to you guys again real soon.